This lesson is for section 5.5. We're going to be evaluating and writing quadratic functions. Our objectives for the day are to evaluate a quadratic function at a certain value of x, which means that we're going to basically be solving for y. So given an x, solve for y. The second objective is the exact opposite, given the output. So in other words, given the y value, determine what the input or the x value of the quadratic function is. Then our last objective is to write an equation of a quadratic that represents a given graph or list of data. Now this data is not going to include the vertex, so this is going to be without your vertex. So we've already written quadratic functions when we're given a vertex. Now we're going to be asking you to do the same thing, but when you're not given a vertex. So there's a different method for this. Let's start with objective 1 and 2 for evaluating quadratic functions. So our objectives, the main thing here is off to the side. We want you to be able to calculate the y when you know the x, or be able to calculate the x when you know the y. So those are two very important skills for this chapter. So let's start with uh, the first question here. It uses this function, f of x equals 3x squared plus 2x minus 11. Finding f of negative 4 is basically calculating the y value when you know x. Okay. In other words, f of negative 4 just means that x equals negative 4, and you're just going to plug that in. So into my function, I plug in negative 4, so I have 3 times negative 4 squared, plus 2 times negative 4 minus 11. The only areas that I see you guys making lots of mistakes is here when you square this negative. This will be a positive 16, multiplied by 3, then minus 8 minus 11. So we have 48 minus 8 minus 11. So f of negative 4 is going to equal 40 minus 11, 29. So really, you have a coordinate, negative 4, 29. Now the goal here was just to evaluate for the y value, but you can write that as a coordinate as well. Now for part b, we want to find x if we know that f of x is equal to oops, negative 6. So f of x equals negative 6 means that this time you know that y equals negative 6, so find x. So here we're going to plug in. 3x squared minus, or plus 2x minus 11 equal to that value, negative 6. So this is where we're going to plug in, negative 6 here. Um, add that 6 to the other side, so we have 3x squared plus 2x minus 5 equals 0, so that we get uh, 0 on one side. And now we're going to be solving this quadratic. Um, what you're going to look to do here is to try to factor if you can. So remember, don't always just try to use the square root method or use the quadratic formula. Try to factor this if you can. So here we're looking for two numbers that would multiply to negative 15 and add up to a positive 2. And since there are numbers that do this, this would be factorable. So I'm going to make this 3x squared because those two numbers coming back to here would be positive 5 and negative 3. Right? So this is going to be 3x squared plus 5x minus 3x minus 5 equals 0. I'm going to factor out the GCF here, which is an x. I'm left with 3x plus 5. Factor out a GCF here, which is negative 1. I'm left with 3x plus 5. Since these two in parentheses are the same, I know I'm factoring it correctly. So I'm left with x minus 1 times 3x plus 5 equals 0. So now I have two solutions here, one at 1 and one at negative 5 thirds. Now, this makes sense because in a quadratic, at a certain y value here, this is going to have two different inputs. So we should have two different inputs, two different x values here. Okay, so there's your answer to part B. Now part C says find the x-intercepts. Um, now the x-intercepts are not these values here. Okay, it's similar to uh, what we're going to do there, but it's not those two values because this is where we were finding when y was equal to negative 6. Okay, that's specifically what we were finding there. Now we're going to be finding where it crosses the x-axis. So in that case, let me erase over here. I didn't really leave us a lot of room. For part C, we want to start with our original function, 3x squared plus 2x minus 11. This is f of x, right? Well, f of x is equal to 0 when it crosses the x-axis. When we want to find those x-intercepts, it's just setting this equal to 0. So whenever you ask for the x-intercepts, just like before, that's letting y equal 0. Okay, that's an algebraic thing that you need to make sure you understand. Anytime you want, you want to find x-intercepts, let y equal 0. So really we're solving this quadratic here. 3x squared plus 2x minus 11 set equal to 0. In this case, if I try to factor here, I get negative 33 and positive 2. This is definitely not factorable, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula here. 
Okay, as you see here, I did the work for the quadratic formula here. I just want to work on simplifying this with you guys. Um, when I simplify this radical on the inside here, I'm left with 2 root 34, okay, divided by 6. Now I'm going to factor out a 2 from here, each of these terms. So I'm left with negative 1 plus or minus root 34 over 3. So these are my x-intercepts here. Um, they're ugly numbers, but that's okay. Um, so to recap, we found a y value when we were given an x. We found the x value when we were given a y, which turned into basically the quadratic um, that we've been working with, you know, solving any quadratic that we've been working with since the beginning of the chapter. And then the last question here, don't get it confused with b. It is different. We're finding the x-intercepts, you know, setting that, that original equation equal to zero. Okay? All right, now, the next type of question that you're going to be asked um, is whether um, a function is, if it's possible for a function to ever equal a certain value, okay? So in other words, can 3x squared, for part A here, can 3x squared plus 2x minus 11 equal negative 5? So there are actually two ways to do number two. Now, if you were given a graph, it's really easy to do, to do this question because obviously if you look over here, um, if it were to say, you know, can this quadratic ever equal negative 10, it's quite obvious that it will never equal negative 10 because your uh, minimum here is at negative 4. So because it does not pass through negative 10, this function can never equal negative 10. Now over here we're not given a graph, so here we have to be able to do this algebraically. So for part A here, you're going to test it within the quadratic formula. So after I add that 5 over to the other side here, 3x squared plus 2x minus 6 equals 0, I'm going to plug that into the quadratic formula. Okay, now after I apply the quadratic formula here, um, what I'm looking for is to determine whether or not inside the discriminant here I have a positive value. Okay, positive or equal to zero. In this case, I do, which means that it is possible for this function to equal negative five. Okay, because I get a real number here, I'll get two real numbers. So it is possible for f of x to equal negative five. Okay, now you can evaluate and find out exactly what x equals there, and in that case, you would simplify this radical and this, and simplify the whole uh, value here to get uh, negative one plus or minus. 2 root 19 over 6, or sorry, negative 2, which simplifies then to x equaling negative 1 plus or minus root 19 over 3. Okay, so this is what makes um, that function equal negative 5, those two values for x. Now for part b, we're going to do the same thing. We want to know is if 3x squared plus 2x minus 11 can equal negative 15. So again, I'm going to test that using the quadratic formula. So really, I want to know whether or not this has real solutions for this quadratic. Okay, After I add that 15 over here, I end up with this quadratic. So I want to know, does this get real solutions? Now, I can actually just test the discriminant here if I want to, because that's really all I'm looking for. Um, the discriminant is going to be b squared 4 minus uh, 4 times a times c. And because this is a negative value, because I have a larger positive here, 4 minus a larger positive is going to end up giving me a negative number here in the discriminant. This has no real solutions if our function is equal to negative 15. Okay, it produces no real solutions. So no, it is not possible for our function to equal negative 15. Okay, the last skill that we're going to be working on today is to, going to be writing quadratic equations. So we actually have already written quadratic equations um, when we are given graphs or when we're given the vertex and, and an additional point. So like this review question here, when we ask, find the equation of a quadratic if the vertex is at 6, 3. So here's our hk value. And the point 4, 10 lies on the parabola. Well, this is just an x, y value. So we can plug this right away into our vertex form. y minus k is equal to a times x minus h squared. And I'm going to just plug in y minus 3 equaling a times x minus 6 squared. And then use the point x, y here. So I have 10 minus 3 equaling a times, let's plug that in using blue, 4 minus 6 squared. And then I evaluate just solving for a. A lot of you guys on the quiz left off this squared part here, so make sure you're not, you're not forgetting that anymore. So you have 7 equals a times negative 2 squared. So we get 7 equals 4a 
divide and we end up with 7 fourths. So our original uh, quadratic here would be y minus 3 equaling 7 fourths times x minus 6 squared. Okay, that would be our final answer. Now, if we're not given the vertex though, this problem is not much harder to do, but we need at least three points in order to find the equation of the quadratic, okay? So as a side note here I have up here, when writing a linear equation, so when we are asked to find something in y equals mx plus b form, you need two points, right? And um, for a quadratic, what we need is three points. So a quadratic needs three points, any points on that parabola, um, unless you're given the vertex and an additional point, so only two points, but that one of those points must be the vertex. If you're given the vertex, we just use this uh, method here, but if we're not, we have to do something slightly different, okay? So to write the equation of a quadratic function containing these three points, notice I'm giving you three distinct points, you're going to use the, the general form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So instead of using vertex form, you're going to use standard form, for our uh, quadratic here. Okay, you're going to plug in each point into this quadratic, okay, starting with, let's do negative 2, negative 11. So plugging in negative 2, negative 11 into this standard form for a quadratic, we get negative 11 equals a times negative 2 squared plus b times negative 2 plus c. This is obviously going to simplify to negative 11 equals 4a plus, or I should, minus 2b plus c. Now if we plug in the point 4, 13, I have the equation 13 equals a times 4 squared plus b times 4 plus c. So notice each of these is going in for the x value, okay? And then this is going to simplify to 13 equals 16a plus 4b plus c. Finally, we have the last coordinate, 629, to plug in. And we end up with 29 equaling a times 6 squared plus b times 6 plus c. This will simplify to 29 equaling 36a plus 6b plus c. Now what we're going to do is take each of these equations here and we're going to solve the system. It's a three variable system to solve for the coefficients here a, b, and c. So we end up with 4a minus 2b plus c equaling negative 11, 16a plus 4b plus c equaling 13. So I'm just right now rewriting the system, that's all I'm doing here. 36a plus 6b plus c equaling 29. Okay, now we can solve this three variable system by hand, but that would be really silly since we can use a calculator here as well. So I want to use matrices here to solve this uh, three variable system. So I'm going to make matrix A, 4, negative 2, 1, negative 11, 16, 4, 1, 13, 36, c, 1, 6, I mean, sorry, and uh, 29. Okay, so here's matrix A. And then I'm going to use my calculator to row reduce echelon form this. Okay, so this is the work that I want to see um, if you're not going to solve it by hand, which I would not recommend. Just use your calculator, but make sure that you're at least showing this work here. So in my calculator, I kind of already did this. I'm going to go to second matrix um, and edit. It's going to be a 3 by 4 system where I just take all the coefficients here, 4, negative 2, 1, negative 11. That's how I'm coming up with that matrix here. And then um, hit second matrix scroll over to math, go down to RREF, and I'm just going to enter it back in here. I end up with this matrix here, okay? So um, I end up with a solution, x is one half, y, B, or sorry, a is one half, b is three, and c is negative seven, right? This, these are the variables that you're solving for. So that's how we're going to interpret this then. If here's row reduce echelon form, this is telling us that our a value is 1 half, our b value is 3, and our c value is negative 7, which means that my original quadratic equation, okay, um, that goes through the, the three points that were given, must be y equals 1 half x squared plus 3x minus 7. I'm just substituting in these values for a, b, and c. Okay, so just to recap, when we are solving 
for the quadratic equation when we, when we need to find that quadratic equation and we're not given the vertex. We can't use vertex form. We must use standard form. We're going to take those coordinates that they give us and plug them in using the y value for the y and the x value here in for this x and this x here. We end up with three distinct equations which we are going to solve using a system and use row reduce echelon form. Use your calculator in order to solve that system and then plug in those coefficients back for a, b, and c to result in this um, quadratic equation here. Alright, I would like you guys to try problem 5 on your own. Make sure that you're really comfortable doing this and rewriting the equations, um, especially here. I think that's probably what your video check is going to be tomorrow, um, is just making sure that you can write the equations given, given the coordinates. Alright, okay, that's the end of the lesson. Nice job. I'll see you in class tomorrow.